Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Steve at the uh, Worley Bogger Fly Company, and uh, welcome back to our video fly tying series. Today, I'm going to show you Tim Irish's Irish Stacked Wing Caddis Fly. Uh, I'm going to tie the, uh, the adult version, and then I'm going to show you the uh, glass bead emerger version. Tim was legendary, uh, you know, around the Yakima River here in central Washington. And uh, he was a huge proponent of polypropylene yarn. He loved to tie his flies with, uh, with this floating yarn uh, because of its ability just to, uh, the ease in which it cast and then the floatability of it. Uh, he loved to tie parachute patterns and integrate, um, you know, wings, uh, polypropylene into the wings of his flies. So this is a great caddis pattern. Uh, and again, you can fish uh, the adult version of this along with the, uh, the, the emerger trailing behind. It's caught thousands and thousands of uh, Yakima River trout, uh, you know, created by the master himself. So I'm honored today to, uh, to show you how to uh, put this together. And uh, if you want to read more about uh, Tim's knowledge, uh, you can uh, hit the link on the on the uh, the web page there and you'll see uh, the article that he penned in uh, Northwest Fly Fishing Magazine. So stay tuned, I'm going to show you how to tie the Irish stacked wing caddis and caddis emerger. Okay, so let's get started. Tying Timbo Irish's stacked wing caddis. We'll do the adult version first, and I'll show you how to do the emerger. So the first thing that you're going to do is load standard dry fly hook into your vise. This happens to be a Gamagatsu S10B size 14. You can tie these, and you know probably. I don't know, 12s through 18, you know, or whatever size caddis that, uh, you know, you may be encountering wherever you're, you happen to be fishing caddis hatches. So load that in your vise and then usually these standard dry flies like this, like to, I don't like to start right directly behind the eye. I would leave just a little bit of gap in there. It gives you a little bit of room at the end just to kind of finalize everything and finish your fly. So just lay down a nice thread base there so everything binds together real well when you're building your fly. It has something to grab onto. You won't get a lot of turning and twisting with your flies. So our first item here that we're going to apply is some Antron yarn. So you're going to want to cut just a small little sliver of yarn off. And this might even be, Tim didn't like it really, really thick so you might even want to shed a little bit out of there. Just have just a small little trailing shuck here behind. So we're going to take that up and basically your tails want to be about the same length as your as your shank of your iron there. So just lay it right up on top. Get your get your measurement. Switch hands and then basically what you're doing is you're just matching the tail or the trailing shock to your the, the, the color the body of your fly so tie that in bind it down really well this is 12 aught V this so it doesn't build Super strong, but it doesn't build a lot of bulk on your fly, which is really nice. You get the you get the strength of like a ten aught thread. 
but you don't get the bulk, the added bulk, you know, especially for your dry flies, you know, and you want to keep them proportionate and thin bodied. Okay, so Tim liked to tie this in a couple of different colors. Of course, here on the Yakima, we got a couple of different colors of caddis, uh, especially in the spring and May, Mother's Day, we have we have an olive body, dark bodied caddis, uh, and then uh, we have a tan sedge caddis, weedy sedge. That so you can tie them in olive uh, or tan, black, brown. You know, again, whatever. Whatever you need to do to match wherever you happen to be fishing. If you're going to be, be tying this for the yak, it's good to have them in uh, tan and olive. So I'm going to take some Antron yarn, which of course everybody knows the name LaFontaine, Gary LaFontaine. He discovered Antron yarn. If, uh, if you don't have caddis flies, that is the Bible of caddis flies. I mean, he was the man. He was the caddis fly guru. Uh, basically, all, almost all fly patterns, all caddis fly patterns that are developed, you know, since the 80s and 90s and the 2000s, even today, are all based on stuff that he came up with. So, if you haven't read caddis flies, uh, I would rec highly recommend getting it. Um, it's a great book. Unfortunately, it's no longer being published, but you can still find it uh, for sale. So uh, if you don't have a copy, I would scoop it up quickly because uh, you can learn a ton from uh, the master himself there, Gary LaFontaine. So Antron Yarn, we know uh, traps air bubbles. So <clears throat> thank you, Gary, for that. This is going to be our dub body, so we will apply this to our thread. And start wrapping it forward, building your, building your body. Keep the proportions and kind of as you, as you move forward, you can You can uh, make it a little thicker towards the thorax. If you get a little bit too much on, it's kind of the beauty of dubbing. So you can just remove it or add if you need to. Okay. So next I'm going to grab the carded version of polypropylene yarn. And I, I like it because it's, when they card it, it gets these little kinks in them. So it really gives you kind of a, a way of, of managing and, and, and knowing how thick of a wing you want on there depending on what you're building. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut right off this first corner there. So you're gonna have a, just a small little shank of, and, the, and we like the gray, the darker version, but you know, even though tan caddis, you know, have a tan body, they'll have a dark wing on them, so this polypropylene, you know, does a great job of imitating that caddis wing. Of course, this is floating yarn, okay? So we're just gonna lay that wing up on top. And kind of the nice thing about it too is you can, you can leave it a little bit long and then if you need to, you can trim it, right? Which, you know, you can't do with, you know, elk or deer hair. So let's just bind that first portion down then just get in there close. You can pull it back and 
and bind it down as well. But I like doing it this way because it doesn't create as it doesn't create as much bulk right there at the at the head of the fly. So just lay that second piece right on top of there. So we can make a good thick wing. And then once you get that tied in, you can see, you know, one's, one's of course longer than the other. So you can just trim it back. Your wing should, should end about right on the, right towards the band of the, of your hook. And I'll just do a half hitch there and that'll keep our thread in place. Then next I'm gonna grab some white dubbing. This is Senyo's laser dub. Tim liked to use this or he also liked to use uh, Ice wing fiber. He 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 really liked that too. So you're gonna grab a. This is gonna be your your second wing. I just kind of fold it fold it together. Then we'll just lay it right on top there. Just pinch it and then. Bind that down. Again, with this, this Vivas does a great job. It just doesn't add a lot of bulk to your fly. Get that in place. Basically, Tim liked that as a kind of as a visual tool, you know, for the fishermen. Uh, you know, because a lot of times you're fishing caddis, you know, in the, in the shade, or you're fishing them at in the evening, dusk, you know, up until dark. So helps you, uh, you know, keep track of your fly located on the water, you know, as you're fishing it. So the next thing we're gonna do is grab a brown or a furnace hackle sized strip off the fibers there expose the quill and lay it in on the side and then we'll just tie that in Then next we'll take just a small amount of Antron dubbing again. And they're sa same as our body color. We're just gonna lay this down here in the thorax just to give give kind of a binding agent to the for the hackle to kind of ride on and sit on. Next, we're gonna just we're gonna grab our Antron yarn again, same as our body color. So since this is tan, we're just gonna take a small amount and lay in here on the thorax, just for a place for our hackle to lay. It'll make it it'll make it, make it more durable. Kind of pull that wing down. And then just make some thread wraps, some dubbing wraps, excuse me. Just kind of build up that thorax a little bit in the front there. And then make sure that you leave that head exposed. Okay. The 
next we're going to wrap our hackle so if you need to grab your hackle pliers unless you got a long saddle you can do it by hand we're just going to do tight thread wraps or excuse me I don't know why I keep saying thread wraps just keep wrapping the hackle forward there get to the front and then we'll tie it off to adjust these little small flies kind of in your vise finish off the head Get all the, try to get all them fibers around your eye so it doesn't impede your tippet. Then just half hitch or whip finish, whatever you like. out of there and cut her off then you can kind of fine-tune your wing if you need to if it's a little bit long there it is that is the stacked wing Caddis by Tim Irish, adult version. So stay tuned and I'll show you how to tie the glass bead emerger version. Okay, so just to save a little bit of time, I've preloaded the emerger hook in here. This is a Komodo 2488, size 14. And I have preloaded the glass bead on here, silver small glass bead sized to fit so again whatever size uh fly you're having to be tying start the uh, thread behind the bead and uh work to uh the very band where where the uh, the hook starts right in on the bend of the of the steel there and again you're going to take your Antron dubbing. This is a little mix. This is rabbit and Antron, so it's a little spikier for the emerger. And you're going to start on the bend of the hook and you're going to start winding that around. And just start farming your body, working towards the I let me want that front just to be a little bit plumper. So we'll add just a little bit of dubbing there. Okay. You can see how spiky. A little mix of rabbit adds a little bit of spike in there. So kind of tra help trap the air bubbles in that Antron yarn. So just like the uh, the adult version, we're going to grab a shank of polypropylene. Just trim it. So you got some nice ends there. Lay it up back behind the bead and then just trap it. And tie that in. And again... 
trim the back. You can kind of see I get that pinching motion. That'll kind of push all the fibers together and trap them. And then your when you when you get it with your thread, your thread will wrap a little tighter and, and trap all those fibers together for you. So you just try to cut them as even as you can there. Again, you can, you know, the nice thing again that Tim liked is it's just it's quick, it's easy, you know, great guide fly. It doesn't take a lot of time to tie. And I've told you before, you know, flies don't have to be, you know, super complicated to be super effective trout catchers. So again, we're going to grab our white laser dub. I just roll the kind of roll this in my fingers to get the fibers together. I'll lay that up on top. Trap it. Tie it in. Tim liked that silver bead too because of the air bubble effect. If you know about caddis, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, well, you've got a little homework to do reading about caddis and their air bubble. La Fontaine did a lot of the work for us. You know, he dove underneath the water over 70 times to watch caddis hatching, you know, and found out about the air bubbles. So that's why I'm telling you, you know, buy his book. If you haven't, buy it. It's the best money you ever spent. Mm. Okay, now we're just, I tied this emerger in olive. And so we're going to take a little bit of olive dubbing just to finish off the, uh, thorax of this again just kind of pull that wing down and we'll just fill in real light I want it too bulky there okay leave enough room behind that bead too where you can get your thread in Picture. And cut your thread off. Then again, you can just kind of fine tune her. And now there's your emerger. So you can fish this tandem with the uh, with the adult version of Irish's stacked wing caddis. You can fish this uh, behind, you know, another, you know, as a as a dropper fly, behind a point fly, what, what, whatever you like. It's killer. It uh, kept, like I said, it uh, was caught thousands and thousands of Yakima trout. So there you go. Irish's stacked wing. Caddis and Caddis Emerger. Miss you every day, Timbo. So tie some up, pass it around, share it. Appreciate it very much.